So the story is today of a woman, a mother, called Morpo, Morpo, and a daughter called Cyril, Cyril, Cyril. We, Bradley likes to he likes to spell them correctly. So Morpo and Cyril. Now the interesting thing about this mother, this mother and daughter, is that Morpo was uh, by herself. She had no husband. Her husband was had died, and she was, for all intents and purposes, in that time, too old to have children, and she did not have any uh, children be before Cyril. But uh, things happened. It was not immaculate conception. It was the normal way. And she fell pregnant with Cyril. She has Cyril. She's in a community, so people will help her. She's not alone in the world, even though she has no husband. But she is a capable woman, competent woman anyway. But she has uh, Cyril. And Cyril is an almost, uh, what can you say, she's an uncommon child. Because from the minute of birth, she has a golden hair. And she has very large uh, eyes that are um, not blue, but more like... Um, a green, blue, blue green, and they are very deep, deep eyes. And Cyril uh, doesn't make much noise. She doesn't cry very much. She doesn't uh, even laugh very much. She doesn't really communicate with those that are around her. This is a little worrying for Mopo because she has seen many children and they are crying and wanting attention from the birth. But Cyril was not like that. But one thing that Mopo recognized with Cyril was that often she would be shocked. So Mopo would perhaps walk into the room and come and look like this to Cyril and Cyril would make this face and jump. And she thought that was so odd because she didn't come in quietly. She came in normally. So she was concerned that there was something not absolutely correct with Cyril. So, of course, who does she summon but the shaman? So the shaman comes and examines and does some tests, if you like, and discovers that Cyril has got no hearing. She has, what you say, deaf. She has no hearing. And at first, Morpo is very distressed by this. Cyril is, is a baby and couldn't care less. But Morpo is very distressed because in the world that they live in, you need to hear. You need to be able to hear a pack of wolves coming for you. You need to be able to hear if there is, uh, you know, birds where you can get eggs. Uh, you, you need to be able to hear what people are saying when they are coming up uh, onto you and things like this. So it was uh, not just something that was nice to have, this hearing. It was a survival requirement in the place that, that Morpo lived. So Mopo, to begin with, was quite upset. Cyril couldn't have cared. But one thing that, uh, as Mopo became more accustomed to this and she would start to uh, do different things to not surprise uh, Cyril and to try to communicate with her, she realized that talking wasn't going to work. So when she was coming up towards her, she would maybe um, uh, flash some, you know, open the, the window or the like this so that light would come in, or she would come up and delicately touch her like that and then come forward so that 
Cyril was not always shocked. But it was very interesting for Mopo because she had to think in a different way. She had to think of not just the normal way that we communicate and that we see with everything and that way that we hear and the way that we feel. She had to start really thinking about the world. How was she going to make the world safe for her child? How was she going to make her child safe in the world? And not just safe, but how could she flourish? How could she provide for herself? So she had to look at the world in a different way. And what she started to, to see was the vibrations. She started to really listen to what people said to her. And they were saying words, and they had some tone, and they had, uh, uh, you know, energies about them. But there was something that was underneath all of that, which was the vibration, which was just that as the air goes in, then when the person speaks, and there is, it vibrates here, right, in this uh, voice area, the voice box, this um, voice organ here, she could sense, she started to be able to sense the vibration that came from that. And then she started to look at the way the person was saying it and the vibration that was coming from the body, it was emanating. Same, she looked at the, the trees and the plants. Uh, she started to look around and she could see all of these different things, these vibrations. And she realized that whilst we have this uh, way of communicating, way of doing things, it's actually superficial. There's something underneath that. And that something underneath it, you don't need to hear. You don't have to have this. You don't even necessarily have to have sight. You just have to have an awareness that there is this other thing underneath it that is driving that, this vibration, that can change very uh, subtly. So she decided that that was how she was going to make Cyril safe. So she tried many different things. She would put Cyril's hand here on her chest, on Morpo's chest, and she would speak. And she would say the same word. Let's say it was bread. And she would hold the bread. 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 And then Cyril would put, she would put Cyril's hand all over different places of her here and on her body so that Cyril could understand bread so that she didn't have to hear it she didn't have to uh, read the lips she didn't have to see it she just had to Mopo just had to put her hands here onto Cyril's hand onto Mopo and say bread and from that vibration of that word came the visual of the bread and the energy of the bread came uh, what went into the bread, who made the bread. So it was the whole picture of the bread was in here, in this vibration. What is interesting about this story is that it has two developments. One is that Morpo was able to see and visualize and understand that there were vibrations going on, right? That there was things going on around that other people were not aware of, but said the same thing as was actually being said. So you didn't have to hear it, you didn't have to know that you could just understand by the vibration. And she realized that and she taught that idea or concept, whatever you want, of vibration to her daughter Cyril. So that was the first step. But was it enough for Cyril to just be able to communicate like that? Because if you face it, her mother has a particular energy around, a particular vibration around, around the word bread. But the neighbor next door might not have the same energy or vibration around the word bread. So she could touch the neighbor and the neighbor could be saying bread, but she could hear vibration could be meat. Because for them, 
the meat was their staple and for Morpo the bread was the staple. It doesn't it, what it, you understand what we mean. So even though Morpo could communicate with Cyril, for Cyril to be fully functional in the community and to be alive and survive, she had to learn herself how to read the vibrations of everything that was around her. So whilst Morpo discovered it and was able to pass on, uh, if you like, an initial taster of this concept, Cyril actually took it and enlarged it. She made it something. And she was able to take it out and people she didn't have to touch people. She could just, she learned just by looking and by really focusing on them. And remember, she was gifted with those deep, dark, blue-green eyes. So she didn't have this hearing, but she was gifted with these. And so she could, if you like, see beyond the face, see beyond the coloring, see beyond what the lips were saying, and see the vibration that it was making. Right? And she could tell from that vibration what it was that they were really trying to get across. And you could say, if you like, that in some respects, the emotion, the energetic, the emotional energy that was coming up in that person, when they're talking about bread, when they're talking about meat, when they're talking about their love, their disappointment, that was the vibration that was coming up, and that's what she could read. You could say that. But at the end of the day, she understood that her mother had given her a gift, of course, and we thank Morpo for really giving this idea of the vibration. And Morpo was not a shaman. Neither was Cyril. They were not shaman. This was just, uh, what can you say, ordinary people doing an extraordinary uh, making an extraordinary discovery and then making extraordinary actions with that discovery. So this idea of vibration for Cyril became the way that she could communicate. She couldn't speak and she could really just read what was coming. But she learned other ways of communicating that people who didn't have this vibrational knowledge could understand. But she was... They thought that she was like um, like a celestial being because she knew exactly from the vibration of the person what they were saying, what they really meant, what they really wanted, even if they were not verbalizing that because the vibration gave it away. And that's, that's the key. That's the key of, of this idea of sound in the shamanic tradition. Blessings to you, our friends. We are the Ancestral Medicine Women, healing from the past for the present and the future.